Good morning. This is another episode of Grimmer Educational Resources for Scientific Parapsychology. In this episode, we're going to hear an excerpt from a talk given by Carlos S. Alvarado to a university class of graduates and undergraduate students in the southeastern United States. Carlos's talk was on his favorite topic, an overview of the history of parapsychology. We're going to watch an excerpt that talks about approaches to doing history in the field and about the influences on the growth of the field. When we get into the history of parapsychology, as you can see in these slides, there are different approaches, different emphasis in the history. And I'm not going to go into much detail here, just to point out, you know, that that in every field, and psychology is no exception, uh, history tends to be written by two different types of people, one by psychologists themselves and the other by professional historians. The psychologists are the ones that tend to be interested in the issues of, of the phenomena themselves. So in the case of parapsychology, the issue is, you know, was telepathy happening in experiments during the 19th century. The historian, the professional historian, is not concerned with the reality of the phenomena. It's more concerned with other issues, such as who were the people that were conducting the research, what was the training, what was the general context in which the research developed, and so forth. Again, these are very specific things to those of us interested in history, but I think it's something to keep in mind when you go through a lot of the readings that I, I compile in the, in the bibliography so that you understand where each author is, uh, is coming from. Getting more into the uh, uh, subject matter, parapsychology or psychical research history. Psychical research is the earlier name for parapsychology in the English uh, language. Uh, in French, they call the field metapsychics. And here you have an example of a main French researcher, which in 1922 publishes a very important book that it has not been that influential in, in the United States and in the English speaking world, but was tremendously successful and influential in France and in other parts of Europe, such as uh, Italy and Spain and uh, in some other places. Basically, Richet was a famous physiologist, and had a lot of prestige in science and in his era. And in this book, which is a survey of psychical research, he presents what he considered were the main periods of, of parapsychology. And we still generally think along these, these uh, lines. He talked about a mythical period which went from antiquity, from, you know, from the very beginnings of humankind to about the 18th century with the work of Mesmer. We'll get a little more with Mesmer later on. Then the actual Mesmeric work, which was the magnetic period, that's the development of Mesmerism, the concept of animal magnetism, and I will get a little more into that later. So the magnetic period goes into the spiritistic period, which is the development of spiritualism starting here in this country in the middle of the 19th century, which brings us the phenomena of mediumship, which has been extremely important for psychical research. And after spiritualism, according to Richet, is the scientific period, which is like from the 1870s to the time when he wrote the book. Of course, this is very much time bound by the era in which he lived. But today we, we consider that particularly the influences of mesmerism and spiritualism have been key in movements to influence psychical research and later in modern parapsychology. And we'll get into that. Here is a diagram that basically illustrates a little what Richer was saying and some of what I will be discussing. So we have at the bottom modern parapsychology, and on the other extreme, I have included what will be more like antiquity, which is before the 18th century, 
And what we find there is almost no investigations at all, with very few exceptions. And uh, what we have is a lot of fascinating claims, a lot of reports of things such as divination. You have a diagram or a drawing here about the oracle at Delphi, which was a, a very influential uh, example of psychic phenomena from antiquity. You have cases of levitation, like the one you see here in the illustration to the far right, that's Joseph of Copertino, was an Italian saint, and the phenomena he shows was levitation, basically floating in the air. And that's generally considered to be a legend, not true by a lot of people, but in actuality, uh, there are many fascinating uh, testimonies of people that saw him doing what you see here in the illustration. So that's an example of phenomena in the old days, but interestingly enough, phenomena that were not really being studied as we will do today. Today we will, of course, we like to analyze a lot of that testimony and collect it in a more systematic way. And uh, we, of course, will try to, to photograph, to film the phenomena, to do all, all kinds of things to learn about you know, what is happening. But in those days, it was, of course, uh, the influence of God, and they saw it as a sign of that the guy was a saint. And, and most of the phenomena from antiquity, that's the way that they were seen. They were examples of divine intervention. Okay, so th then, well, here we here have the period of mesmerism, spiritualism, psychical research, but in between there are a lot of mo other movements and a lot of interactions of different ideas that influence what we have been thinking or we were thinking at the time about psychic phenomena. And the, the, in the extreme left, by the bottom, you see psychology and psychiatry, the development of the idea of the subconscious mind, the study of dissociative pathology, automatisms, and many other psychological uh, phenomena. The point of this diagram is just to show that these are very complex interaction of movements, ideas, uh, phenomena that eventually develop into what we call uh, parapsychology today.